So a couple of months ago, it was a wild, windy day here in Texas, and I sat bundled up near the window, listening to the wind. I very quickly fell into a reverie, as I often do, and I felt a tingle down my spine and a twitch in my left pinky toe, two sensations that I had learned to pay attention to because they meant that something very important was about to happen. The next day, I'm going on my morning jog around the creek, and I stop at what sounds like something crying out in pain. I look around, and I notice a tree that lives along the trail. Its body had been split in half. It had lost its battle with last night's wind. I was devastated, and I walked toward the tree to go examine further what had happened. But what shocked me more was looking around at all the other passerbys on their phones and chatting, who didn't even notice what happened. How could they not see, hear, feel the destruction that had occurred here? Outraged, I felt anger pulsate through the left side of my body, and it made me want to do something. So I got closer to the tree. And I prepared to do a healing ritual that I had learned a while back. Now, part of the healing ritual contains a qigong movement, and qigong is a healing meditation practice that stems from China, traditional Chinese medicine, and martial arts. So I figured it could be something that helps the tree. It help, it's helped me and my students heal from physical, mental, emotional wounds. So, why not do something for the tree? So I positioned myself in front of the tree, got into my stance. And I prepared to do the ritual. I took two deep breaths. The first one to calm my nerves because I'm out in public. The second to focus 100% of my senses toward the tree. And very quickly, I felt like I was inside of the tree, and I can see what was going on with it. I began to do the healing ritual, and then I did the movement. And this is the movement that I did. As I moved, I imagined the roots of the tree sinking deeper down into the earth, absorbing fresh water so that it can feel revitalized as it grows. I imagined the sun rays beaming down on the leaves, the branches, the twigs, the trunk, as to give it a little bit more courage and faith to continue growing. I imagined that whatever part of the tree that needed to break off and die would do so. So that it can grow harmoniously, and I imagine that all of the birds, squirrels, critters, and people who frequent the tree would be so gentle with it as it goes down this long, difficult path of restoration. I finished the ritual, broke my form, and went to go sit at a nearby bench to catch my breath. And about five to ten minutes later. I noticed small crowds formulating around the tree. Oh, poor tree! When did this happen? What can we do about this? I heard them say. As I looked at them, looking at the tree, I started to wonder: How often is it that we go through our lives and not notice the devastation that's occurring because we're so consumed and wrapped up in our own world? We don't notice our classmate who is struggling with their homework and is afraid to ask for help because of their crippling anxiety. We don't notice how our colleague seems to always fall behind on projects when they have to work from home because their home life is chaotic and destructive. We don't notice our neighbor who stopped going on their morning jogs around the block, and instead they sit on their front porch staring at old pictures, quietly grieving the loss of a loved one. Why is it that we don't notice these things? I asked myself, and the answer that came is we are so desensitized. And we've developed this thick skin that's caused us to be disconnected from the world around us, and also from within ourselves. And unfortunately, with the fast pace our society is moving, we're going to stay that way. Thinking of social media and its endless scrolling, which withers away our capacity to fully react to what it is that we're experiencing. Even looking at how we speed read through books and articles and conference papers, and how we binge watch TV shows and movies so quickly that we don't have time to digest what it is that we're consuming. Even down to the news and horror films and crime shows, which put our central nervous system in a sympathetic fight, flight, freeze response, which is constantly vigilant, looking out for danger. With all of this. No wonder we're numb, we're desensitized, and we have this thick skin. 
We're told that this thick skin protects us from the world, but I believe what it's doing is just causing us to be even further disconnected from the outer world and our inner world. Carl Jung would say that when we lose sense of our inner world, we can no longer introspect. We don't know what we want, what we need, or we desire, and we feel lost. This is something I first noticed when I was living abroad and I was counseling high school students and undergraduate students, and so many of our conversations circled around how lost they felt. They couldn't articulate why they chose to major in a certain subject. They couldn't say what they enjoyed about this activity that they had been doing for over a decade. And they couldn't really say what they wanted for their lives outside of school itself. For them, they'd been told at a young age to toughen up, to have this thick skin. And they had been pushed through a regimented daily to-do list so quickly that they turned into machines of production, unable to feel into what they were sensing. The more I talked to them, the more outraged I felt, and I wondered what I can do to help them. And I turned to my lifelong practice of meditation and martial arts and my training in psychology, and I realized that we can resensitize ourselves, and maybe we should. So I talked to them about it, their parents were on board, and our counseling sessions became a space for them to explore their imagination and cultivate their sensitivities and very quickly, they transformed. They were able to say what aspects of school lit them up, what people around them left them feeling inspired or left them feeling dejected. They were able to dream about what they wanted their life to be like outside of school, and for some of them, outside of the expectations other people had on them. For them, the desensitized thick skin didn't serve them, and I don't believe it serves many of us. As one of my teachers, Genevieve, said, I'd rather have thin skin. She was speaking metaphorically, but I thought about that. I would rather be so moved by a work of art at a museum that I abandon the rest of the floor, focus on this one work for two hours, going through this emotional journey of catharsis and clarity. I'd rather be so bothered or bewildered by this one paragraph or this line in a movie that I have to put the book away or the, the show away for a couple of days and go live my life and try to make sense of what it's saying. I'd rather be so swept away by a song that I skip over an item on my to-do list in order to go down memory lane of fleeting moments that I had with the past love. This way of being is not new. This is being imminent, present, and aware. It's where we cultivate our sensitivities and utilize the full sensorium that we human beings are born with. So how do we do it? My answer has been spiritualized somatic practices like Tai Chi and Qigong or breath work or ecstatic dance or even mindful eating. These practices have been really helpful because they teach you focus, so you're not constantly distracted by all the bells and whistles and the glitz and glamour that's all around you. They teach us discernment so we can locate the source of how we're feeling and recognize if it's how we feel or how it's been superimposed onto us. And they teach us boundaries. And they give us a safe space to practice being vulnerable and know when we've been hurt and be able to articulate that to other people. The practice that I offered to you all earlier, it's one called Divine Wood, and it helps to reawaken sensation back into the body. And from a psycho-spiritual lens, it helps to cultivate our capacity for hope. Dr. Tumasolo at Columbia always told us that hope was more of a verb rather than a noun. And so for me, this form is my way of actively hoping for change and for transformation and for healing or whatever it is that I hope for. And with the rise of somatic practices like these, I can see how our world is changing. And I can imagine, I can see the day in which we let the world influence our senses so that we can then influence the outer world. Thank you.